So a few images of uh, what the wind and the condition is looking like. Uh, I had to furl about half main because uh, the wind really picked up and it's forecasted to pick up, pick up even further, which it's already doing. I'm getting, uh, as I'm recording this, I'm getting shaken quite a fair bit. Uh, it doesn't show that much on these, these images, but the wind really picked up since then. Uh, you'll see the main where it's at uh, on the next clip. So again, like this is this is something fantastic about the Selden rig. It's like no matter what point of sail you're at, it, you, you can actually adjust the sail size. You see, I'm half boom there, a bit more than half boom. Uh, so so I can adjust my sail size on my main uh, as I wish from the cockpit by myself on any point of sail. So it's really something really cool to have when you're single handing. I can't. I don't have enough good word about that Selden rig. Uh, it, it really works and performs well. <laughs> so, day 19, day 20. Uh, had a few. You know, I always think the wind is good, the wind is good. Now it is good. Now I'm in the trades. There's like a solid 20, 25 in the gust established. Some nice swell. This is supposed to last a couple of days and then it's going to taper off a little bit. Which I'm glad it will because I'm sure this is going to create a lot of waves downrange in the, in the Marquesas. So I want to come in there uh, as in as smooth condition as I can. It's my first time out there. I mean, it looks to be an easy anchorage. I'm, uh, I'm talking like I'm almost there. I'm 600 miles away, which, you know, it's funny because coming from the west coast of Mexico, Cabo to Zihuatanejo is like 550 miles. And, and uh, it's typically like it's a long trip, something that people plan ahead for, rightfully so, like it's, it's a long stretch of ocean. But right now I feel like I'm almost home because I only have 600 miles to go. Uh, but that 600 miles should take me like today, now. Yesterday I did 137 miles. So the wind kind of picked up late in the, the morning. Uh, the day before that was the wor worst day for mileage. I did only 80 miles. But uh, if, if, any mile, if any day is going to bring me back to my normal planning average which is 150 miles on this boat like today should be 150 miles day plus same with tomorrow the day after that i'm not too sure but if that happens it means i'm four days away from making light landfall so i'm pretty uh encouraged about that i'm pretty happy with it all the autopilot's been working i mean it's not letting go i'm aware it can let go at any moment uh, should that happen, I mean, it's it's gonna cause a delay. It's gonna make me stay like another day offshore, uh, and it, and I'm gonna get there way more tired because I'll have to I'll have to work it the last five days, you know. But but typically, like it's been going in and out and coming back, and now it's holding well. So fingers crossed, this thing's gonna hold me uh, and make me get to the Marquesas. Um, again, I go back to Pretty Quinn and the, the, the weather forecast. If you know how to read these maps, I find them to be very, very accurate out in the ocean. It's something else when you're close to shore, like you have to be a bit more uh, sort of in the uh, in the ether of interpreting the, these these uh, model if you're gonna be close to shore. But it, once you're once you're five or 600 miles away from land, like these things are bang on, very, very sharp. Like they, they predict big models and you know, there were days that I expected to do more mileage. I, I thought I had seen something in the forecast that, that were gonna allow me to do more mileage. But in the end, like thinking back, I, I look at it, you know you're in the ITCZ, it's showing you some up and down uh, movement in the wind strength. You just gotta interpret that map as it's gonna be shifty and light wind because you know where you are and, and that's that. So, um, I mean, if it stays that way, and I think it's gonna stay that way. I don't feel like nothing else is in store for me. If it stays that way, will have been a great trip. Like, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy I kept going when the autopilot left out. 
uh, incredible service with Starlink. Like it's just like I see some people on, on some Facebook group just bitching Starlink. I just don't get that. I don't understand. Like it, to me, I, I was used to a, an Iridium Go connection, which was like a text only. It would take me 10 minutes and sometimes I'd have to try it 10 times to download a grid uh, file to, to get uh, basic weather information. Uh, not, now I have YouTube here. Like it's kind of, it, it, it's a complete revolution. It's a complete change. I mean, it changes psychologically also how, how you approach these things because I used to be very lonely even in some remote anchorage. I would have no internet and I used to feel like very far away from everything. And now you have internet and you start looking at that AIS data chart that uh, that uh, Predict Wind provides and you see that there's a boat within like a hundred miles of you, which is far, but it's not that far. Like if I if I was in big trouble and I, I, I called a rescue, I know this boat is not far away from me and they could come and, and rescue me. So, I mean, it's really, it's really opening up a, a, a new world of, uh, of communication uh, offshore. And I'm very thankful for it, I can tell you that. I, I feel it improves my safety. Now, it takes away part of the old experience because part of the old experience of crossing an ocean, when I did the, my, my ride from Fort Lauderdale to San Diego in 2015, like you, you felt more alone. So I suppose when you got to land, it was more of a sort of coming back to life, you know, spring experience type deal. Uh, now this is gonna be diminished a little bit because you stay in contact with the outside world. You're not like alone in the middle of the ocean on your boat as much. So, but uh, I'll, I'll take the increased safety that Starlink provides over over the old, uh, you know, the, the old experience was something. Like it was, there, there was something to being alone on the ocean for one month and then all of a sudden rediscovering and rejoining civilization. Like there was something about that that was very uh, interesting. And of course, I, I expect that going to the island, that feeling is gonna be a bit diminished on me. Uh, but overall, like it, it, it just, there's so many layers of safety that having a communication system like that provides that I wouldn't give it up for anything. Uh, yeah. That's the thought. <laughs>